that is me for the very first time, Justin. Hello, Justin. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. Okay, I'm Lindy. I'm Miguel. Nice Miguel, to nice to meet you. Deep breath. We got this. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. We got this. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Married to Reality. It's the Married at First Sight edition. I'm your co-host, John, here with my wife and co-host. It's the one and only Teresa. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? Whew. This was an emotional one. It was. And I hate to say this, guys. You might, you might think otherwise, but this was my least favorite episode so far. <laughs> dare you turn. I know you know what? why you know why yeah because you're a emotionless eastern european woman well that's not true neither of that yeah <laughs> when i met you cold you were cold what are you talking you would, about you would not hug you would not say i love you germs um yeah it's for a special person. You were a cold-hearted European biatch. Gee. No, I wasn't. But uh, I'm, I'm upset that you're about to shit on this parade. You know why? It's because it was too, it was a repeat, a repetitive, a repetitive. That's the name. Have you watched this? It's like one person does something, then everyone has to do something. We're going to do month anniversaries. We're going to do sex talks. We're- I know, but at least the month anniversaries, everyone does something else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but everyone's got a different story. Everyone's got a different yeah, letter to themselves. Yeah, but it's like DP goes inside and everyone talks to DP and then everyone writes and reads the letters and I just need more action. Yeah, like, yeah. Show me something else. <laughs> no one's letter, to be fair, which is why I can't get behind it as much as I used to be able to get behind it. No one's letter will ever top Lindsay's letter. <laughs> Lindsay from Ma- Boston. Mark the Shack. I don't remember her Lin- letter. They were like in the woods and she was like, dear Lindsay, you were a strong little bitch. You were smarter than everyone in your kindergarten class. Ah. They didn't like you because they were jealous of you. <laughs> you have the Lindsay gift. Whenever oh, you yeah. meet someone, you leave them better than they were before they met you. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> my only my only regret is that there aren't more Lindsays in this world. <laughs> Classic. No one will ever top that letter. I honestly... <laughs> The only thing about I like about the letters is that they all are good. Like how much time do you spend writing it? Most That's of a, these most of these letters, like Mitch's letter was really yeah. good. Kristen's letter Let was decent. Let me ask you this then, because as we were sitting down to record, Teresa said full disclosure, I could not write one of those letters to yes. myself. Okay. I think you have enough time to do it. You're just saying emotionally you couldn't yeah. get there. I think you could. I think you could. My question to you is how long did you spend on what I imagine is the most emotional thing you've ever written? How long did you spend on your vows? Oh, uh, I kept going back and forth for several days. Like I started like thinking about them and then I started writing them at the airport as I was flying to our wedding. What? But I had a, I had a week. That's true. You got there a week before But th- me. that wasn't like, that was just me putting it on a paper. I've been thinking about it for a long mm. time mm-hmm. and I had a few notes and then I just kept going back and forth. Yeah. I didn't like sit down and write our vows. What? I just, I, I just, cause I wasn't like, I wrote it. You eventually it. had everything written out. Yes, line but by I kept line. going back and I was like, is this good enough? Should I change it? Should I add, remove? So a week, a few days. Like How- writing, writing. No, the whole process from concepting to writing, I'm editing. i say a couple of months. Whoa. All yeah. Right. I kept like thinking about it and I just, because I'm not a writer and, and you're really good with the English language. So I was like, I can never beat you. Not beat up that it's a competition, but I'm like, I can never make my vows sound better or more emotional than I know yours are going to be because you just have a way. I disagree. I disagree. But you love them because you know me and you, cause I was talking to you and so I was just trying to express myself, but not to be cheesy. Yeah, I think it's a misconception that you have to be clever. I think as long as you're speaking from the heart, the worst thing you can do is probably, and this isn't the worst thing you can do to start. I was going to say the worst thing you can do is probably go online and just copy and I the didn't. template. The, you can start 
there. And believe me, I started there and said, what are in vows? And when I gave my best man toast, I said, what's in a best man toast? It's great to get some guidelines. I need parameters. But then as long as you're authentic and make it your own, it, no one can say a bad thing about it. It's it's real to you. It's true to you. It's from the heart. And that's why it was beautiful. It didn't have to be laugh out loud funny. It didn't have to make people cry. But as long as it came from the heart, it was amazing. And it did. I didn't really go online or anything. It's just... I just, I think I, I struggled with how, what I want to say to you so it's personal enough in front of everyone, but not too personal. That's something I would only share right. with you. It's a fine line. So I was line. trying to find a balance. It's a fine line. And also, I don't like cheesy stuff. So I was like, I don't want to sound cheesy, but I do want to sound like what I want to say. Yeah. I want it to sound real. So I don't know. You, you did, Teresa. Did you like it? Yes. You cried. I loved it. You I cried. cried. I, I cried. saw you. <laughs> I cried. All right. <laughs> Enough about that. I just brought that up because I was going to say, no matter how long you spent on yours, I would imagine they spent less time on theirs. Only because we know this is there's a timeline to the show. Yeah. I think maybe at most they had a couple of days. To write these letters? Yeah. Now, if you're a student of the show the way we are, you know this is coming. So you can start <laughs> to plan in advance. But I bet they get an email from production or something that says DP is coming. She's going to have you write the letter to yourself. You probably have a couple of days max. That's I guess. My guess. That's my guess. I, I think... It's not the writing part for me. It's the thinking and like trying it, put it on the paper. I think it's a healthy exercise. I actually think podcasting in a way is not writing a letter to my younger self, but it definitely gets me to think about things. I wouldn't normally think about just walking through the supermarket, driving in the car. I think I think about myself because I put myself in the shoes of these people and so... I think you could do it because you do that here. I think you could get in touch and get emotional. And I guess. Yes, of course you but, can. But, okay, maybe this is it. I don't want to. There you go. <laughs> and we can explore that because I think that's a sort of defense you're putting up because you are hesitant to get in touch. With are you DP or what? Yeah, where's my cup of tea? Oh, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> you notice DP's always got a cup of something. Does she? That, well, we can diagnose that too. That's her security. Some people have a phallic. Obsession. She's got an obsession with holding a warm mug. In I mean, her hand. when you're visiting someone's home, I always want something too. If even oh, I don't ask, oh, do you want anything? I'll be like, sure, I'll take water. It depends on what the house smells like because homes have scents. I'm very fortunate. Your home in check, no scent really. And you have a my dog. My mom there. is a clean freak. You're a dog. So am I. I'm scared to ask, what does my family's home smell like? No. Nothing, right? Nothing. It's hard to smell your own home, but... But it's also like, I would have a... An, uh, this is just my... I don't want to say I have an OCD, but I have an obsession with cleaning. And yeah. if your parents' house wasn't clean, I would have a, a lot of issues with it. But that's what I'm saying. If you walked into a home and it had that stank, yeah. you would not ask for a, a cup of tea. No, probably not. Mm. But like your parents' house is clean. My parents' house is clean. We good. All right. Enough of that. Little housekeeping before we get into this episode. Follow us on Instagram at Married to Reality Pod. Good time over there. Message us. Teresa's caught up on the messages. I think there might be one or two left. We'll get her on that as soon as we finish here. So at Married to Reality Pod on Instagram for the memes, the news, the messages. It's all there. Also, you guys know about the Patreon, patreon.com slash Married to Reality. The single life is up there. There's video for our family affair friends. There's audio for our Cousins Club friends. And then if you just want to get on the Patreon at the lowest tier, at the Friends with Benefits tier, you'll get the episode you're listening to now without any ads. We're trying to cut out the the housekeeping, this right here. If you don't want to hear this, get on the Patreon. Get on the Patreon, guys. And also, you can see my cow mark, my move. Well, I posted a photo of it on Instagram today to promote yes, the did. Patreon. Ah, it's okay. We got to give people a taste. We guys, just- if you want a link to my move mark... <laughs> Let me know. I'll share. Not everything's behind a paywall, but here is what's behind the paywall. Love is Blind After the Altar. That's coming to the Patreon on the Cousins Club and Family Affair level. So now is a great time. It's the middle of the month. It's still a great time to get on the Patreon. A lot of content over there. So check it out. Patreon.com slash Married to Reality. Also, guys, make sure you're just following the podcast right here, wherever you're listening. It could be Apple. It could be Spotify. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you're following the podcast. It's so easy to do. You just look down, smash that follow button. Guys. 
Smash like it's as high as those Bible parties. <laughs> <laughs> that really cracked me up. They, they partied in the Bible. <laughs> no one parties harder than Jesus on his birthday. I mean, those are some parties. Didn't he? I, I did don't you, know. Were you I, just going to say, didn't he die on his yes, birthday? Yes, I did. No. December 25th, Riz. You hear of Christmas? Oh, that's you right. You hear of Christ Mass? I, I really suck it. I suck it. Nobody at parties like Jesus on his birthday. Well, we party on the day that he died. Yeah. Yeah. And then his resurrection, Easter. We're you gonna drink on Christmas. That's I, what I'm I, saying. I drink most days. So, <laughs> anyways. That's not true, guys. We're cutting back. We're we really cutting are. back. <laughs> That's why we're drinking our this tea. This is a sober podcast, believe yes. it or not. But all right. Not, not in general, just right now. But to add to Jesus, didn't he turn water into wine? An absolute animal. So I, that's I would, that's that's the best party I would, trick. I would party with Jesus. I just would look, party with Jesus. Just look at Jesus. He looks like he follows the Grateful Dead around the country. This guy gets <laughs> down, right? And he's ripped. He well, did something right. He, he, he My grandma goes to church. She's very religious. And there is a statue of Jesus on the cross. And it's, I always remember when I was a kid and I had to go with grandma I was always like, damn, he's rip. Whoa. Rip. <laughs> that was your first crush. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's slightly bloody. But yeah, yeah. I was always like, wow, like, you what would, a physique. You would let him nail you. Jesus. Hey, Jesus, Jesus jokes. <laughs> Jesus jokes. All right. Um, so Moving make sure on. you're Moving following on. the podcast. And last but not least, if you haven't left a review, please do. We love when you guys leave reviews. A lot of you have, and we thank you for that. We read the five-star ones on the 90-day pod. And if you haven't left one, please, it would it would make our day. All right. You ready, Freddy? I, I am so ready, Frederick. Let's get in <laughs> to this episode. It is the note to your younger self episode. And the DP episode. DP earned her paycheck this episode. She showed up and she earned her money. Yeah, how many teas did she drink? At least three, I'm going to say. <laughs> I mean, she's hydrating. True. Very true. So here's here's what happens. We first start off with a ladies hang. Yes. And a man's hang. And guys hang sounds a little better. Guys hang. Men's hang. <laughs> and a man's hang. <laughs> um go ahead, Morgan. Go ahead. Do exactly what you're mad at Ben for doing. Go ahead right now and just spill it all with the girls. Yes. Yeah, same old, same old. He's lying. She asked him not to sp- not to share with Jason, Justin. Why do I call him Jason? She did. He did. Same old, same old, same old, right? And they are separated. That's, yeah, that's the big news. I think we probably knew that or we knew it was going that way after yeah. the throwing the flowers and stomping on them. And Doesn't it sound crazy? It. Oh, me and my husband are separated. Oh my gosh, like how long have you guys been to <laughs> marry? It's like three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> There's like 24 days till decision day. And we're, <laughs> we're like, what are you talking about? Yeah. But she, uh, all right, let, let's talk about it because I have a lot of thoughts. So yeah, Morgan just spills her guts and the girls, you could see like, you get read faces. I feel like some of them are kind of like questioning her, but they don't want to say anything because they don't fully know the story. And you got to be, you got to be on her team. But the only one who knows the story is Alexis. And I was expecting her to say something and she didn't. No, because I think deep down, they all know she's a little cuckoo. Yeah, she sure is. But ladies are like, you know what? Let's go and let's, let's interrupt the guys. But before they did, the guys are talking. Yeah. And so Ben kind of lets it all out, says, I've been talking to Justin about Morgan and I've been lying to her face about it. This is not going to be the first time he just says, yeah, I lied to her face about it. But he, I feel bad for him because he and he's going to say, he says, she has such a strong personality that I, I didn't feel comfortable talking to her about certain things. Forget. So I went to I went to Justin, but she asked me not to, but I had to vent. I felt bad for him. I do too. And forget her personality. Take that out of the equation. You should be allowed, barring any family secrets or something that someone 
asked you not to tell, you should be allowed to talk to your friends about your relationship. And especially, especially this type of relationship. And again, yes, people share with friends and I think it's perfectly fine. I don't share because that's just who I am, right? I share with John because he's my only, only bestie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if I have a problem, I do go to John. If he has a problem, we talk about it. I think some, a lot of couples do. Some couples, they ask for friends' advice, which is perfectly fine. But when it comes to this type of a situation, which, which is very unique, how many people do this? 10 a year? Yes. Or 20 <laughs> so, a year? I was just going to say. So it's absolutely normal that he seeks another point of view from someone who's going through the same thing. And if Morgan says, don't do it. And I almost feel like that's, that's not okay. And can I just reiterate a point that I made last week that I think is so important in the context of this, she's putting it on television. Yeah. So for her to get mad that he's telling one guy in private, Morgan, you signed up to put this on TV. Yes, and just think about it. If Justin wasn't, I'm going to say, if Justin wasn't an idiot in this sense and just pick up the phone and talk to Ben like a normal person, didn't put him on a speakerphone, that she wouldn't even know. Fine, but I'm not even going to call Justin an idiot for that because I don't think anything Ben was saying seemed confidential. He wasn't like, oh, I probably shouldn't have this on speakerphone. Ben was probably just like, yeah, Morgan's mad at me because I said she wasn't a nurse. That's not, that's not top secret information. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't even fault Justin for being on speakerphone. Maybe if word got back to him and Ben said, so Morgan's not happy that we're talking, then he should take more precautions. But I don't think either of them did anything wrong. Even Mitch agrees. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll take it back. Justin is an idiot in this, in this case. <laughs> um, but I feel I can totally see it. I can see that discussion when Morgan's like, okay, did you talk to Justin? And she does sound like a bully. She does come in hot and heavy. And I just feel like Ben was afraid to say that he did, that he said, oh, no, I didn't. Yeah. And that's the lie. I don't think he tried lying to her on purpose. I think he just lied because he thought that was the best way to avoid her anger but he didn't know that she knew from alexis yeah the thing i find interesting is when the girls were talking morgan said ben's not reaching out he's not trying to get in contact with me he's not trying to smooth things over which okay but then when ben's talking to the guys he says i want to go through the eight weeks and then make a decision So are you going to go through the next three, four weeks or whatever in radio silence and then make a decision or that doesn't, to me, those two things don't work together. True. But I'm curious because she was so aggressive last time they spoke, right? Maybe Ben does not want to reach out. Maybe he wants to figure out like, do I want to reach out or Will Do I even cool want to be in this marriage? And he knew that a DP visit was coming up. Yeah. So maybe he figured, well, I'm just going to keep my lips shut yeah. until DP can help. And then we'll take yeah, it Yeah, because like after what she said last time, she was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm in this. Uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to show up every <laughs> single day to remind you what you did. Consider me your shadow. If someone said that to me, I would be like, oh, uh, hell no. Okay. Mm. I don't think I would necessarily be texting the person that's like, hey, so how is it going? How's your day going? How was your how was your work as a nurse? Because I know you are one. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Right. So, okay, the girls in, infiltrate the guys hang. Yes. And everyone's faces, all the guys' faces except for Mitch and Miguel, looked like someone just killed their cat. They were like, <laughs> <gasps> Mitch and Miguel were like, oh, hey, <laughs> what's up, girls? Yeah, and Mitch and Miguel are the ones who are asking the questions because Miguel says, all right, we know Ben's side of the story, but let's hear yours more again, right? Yeah. And he, they're asking a bunch of questions and Morgan's answering the same thing, saying he was lying, he was lying, and Miguel is like, lying about what? I'm so glad someone asked that yes, question. Yes, I was, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> about what? And Morgan's like, well... 
he goes to Justin and, and tells him things about our marriage and then says to me, well, he wasn't talking to Justin. It's like, really? This is what you're going to let your marriage suffer from? Yeah. And I think the guys that are being nice, I think there are a lot of them take Ben's side or if not all Everyone's of them. Everyone's taking yeah. Ben's side, the girls and the guys. Yeah. Did you see Morgan? They just had know a- that Morgan knows like Moy die, and so they're scared to disagree with her. Sure. Did you see she had a new tattoo? Oh yeah. What do you think it said? It's like I hate Ben. Yeah. Like, <laughs> ben Dover, you're about to get <laughs> fucked. <laughs> yeah, I saw that from a mile away. Yeah, yeah. but so, okay. even like Nate chimes in. He's like, "All right, so what's up with the hostility? Like, why are you so hostile to what it's been?" Yeah, he's like, we're having an abnormal experience, so take things a little bit lighter. Everyone's in a new circumstance, a new situation, and they're trying to find their way through it. And Morgan's like, yeah, and since it's so abnormal, I need him on my side, and he wasn't. And I kind of see her point, because sure, she's probably, imagine how stressful it is. Not only did you just marry a guy who you don't know, You're living with that person and having cameras follow you. So I get you're probably super stressed out and you want to find comfort and feel security. But Ben didn't do anything to break that. I, yes, it's a lie if you said I didn't talk about it, if you did talk about it. But there's no issue with talking about it in the first place, I don't think. So he shouldn't even have to lie. Yeah. That's that's why I feel like it's so crazy that she's considering this such a betrayal. Yeah. I don't know. I think this is very much exaggerated and I feel bad for Ben in a way. Oh, yeah. And I don't know if we should. I don't know if he's actually authentically apologetic or if he's just going through the emotions because it's hard to get a read on him. It's hard to see, does he truly believe what he's saying or is he just rattling off some catchphrases because he, he keeps apologizing, which is good. And he's taking ownership of what he calls lies because Morgan calls him lies. And he's like, you know, what? I feel bad. I actually signed up for therapy so so I could demon slay my demons. Hashtag goals. Hashtag in it to win it. Like everything seems so surface and like he's putting on this. Front. I don't think so. I think he's just like trying to do something. But then speak authentically. When he's like, oh, I signed up for therapy to, to demon slay my demons. It's like, come on, man. It goes back to the wedding vows. Just be real. That's not how, that's not how you talk in an authentic moment. Oh, uh, okay. That's, I, when I he, that's, that's the equivalent of him being like, what do you mean? I said nice things to you. I told you your drip was fire. It's like, that's not authentic. <laughs> Tell her she's beautiful. And I, and I get it. I'm old, right? I'm old. I'm so old. I just don't think. I don't think the kids talk like that these days. Ben's almost 30. Mm-hmm. Don't, if you're going to give a real compliment, don't be like, that ice is so drippy. Come on. <laughs> come on. I just think he's awkward. I don't, I don't think he has a lot of experience with women. And I think he's just an awkward person who now is being blamed for lying. And he did lie. Listen, he did lie. It is a lie. It's he a lie. He did lie. He absolutely lied. But I think he was just feeling desperate to talk to someone and afraid to talk to Morgan. And he knew, and let's remember, this lie came after an actual thing that wasn't so good that that Ben did when he sort of made a stink about Morgan not being a nurse. Yeah. So that was not good. Yeah, no, no, that whole thing sucked. That was not good. That's slap, slap Ben's wrist for that. And so then Morgan's mad And then he continues to talk to Justin and then he feels the need to lie because, oh, Morgan was mad at me for saying things about the nursing, which rightfully she could be upset about that. So that's why this whole thing snowball. It's a snowball effect. Yeah, no, for sure. I think she just, she should have been more understanding and open to what it's him. So he would feel more comfortable talking to her. I just think that even when she said, yeah, like when I come home, like, I don't want to, I don't want to take care of anyone. I, I'm tired from work. Like, I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Like, she put up a right. wall. Yeah. She, and before that even happened, really. And so going into this with knowing 
that your partner feels this way, it's like, all right, so can I even bother you? Are you tired right. from work? Right. I want to talk about this, but like, do you even want to hear it? You said you don't want to be bothered. So uh, that's why I feel bad for Ben. Not because he lied or because whatever, he did lie, but because I have this whole thing escalated. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. She made it very hard for, yeah. for him to be yeah. a, a, a good partner. So let's keep talking about Ben and Morgan since yeah. we're doing it. DP arrives. DP to the rescue. So I assume no one lives in the apartment. I think Ben might. Really? If he doesn't have to pay for it, he's like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Leaves probably the true. lights on. He's, he's probably true. He's Kevin McAllister in that hotel room. He's jumping on the bed. He's, he's ordering he's room service. Life. Oh, yeah. He's like plugging everything. <laughs> yeah. Just like keeping the lights on all night. Yeah. So, so DP is there. And doing laundry after 4 p.m. Oh, dangerous. So DP comes in, asks Ben what happened. How did this all happen? And he says, well, I didn't think I had expectations going into this marriage. I thought whatever comes my way, I'll be happy with it. He says, but clearly I did have expectations. I was judgmental. I was being oversensitive. And it got to a point where I was scared to talk to Morgan about these things I was dealing with. So I went behind her back, lied to her face about it. And again, count how many times he says lie to her face. I think at this point he's almost trolling her because she said it once. And now he's like, yep, I lied to her face. I went behind her back. I lied to her face. You see, I don't think he's trolling her. I just think he's using her term to really acknowledge what he did wrong, hoping that they can fix or it. Or just to pacify her. Like, yes, I lied to your face. I lied to your well, face. Well, yeah, but he says it because she almost wants him to. Like if he said, yeah, I lied. Like... Right, uh, right, right. It's it's putting the dog's face in its shit. Yeah, like, he keeps yeah, you like owning boy. up to it like so hard. Yeah. yeah. And so DP tells Ben, you, you excluded Morgan from knowing how you truly felt by taking it elsewhere. So that's shame on you. You need to let your yeah. partner know where you stand, how you feel. And Morgan's like, yeah, when I look back, I wonder... Could I have made a safer space for Ben to come and talk to me? Yeah. Yeah, probably. Would she have ever? I don't see, I don't see no. that from her. I just don't see her as someone who wants to be married. I know it sounds harsh, right? Yeah. But ever, ever since she got married, it's she's very, and there is nothing wrong with being independent. I'm very independent, but I, I'm happy to have you, right? But she doesn't want to let go of that independency. There's such a difference, though, and I've, I've always said this throughout my life. There's such a difference between wanting someone and needing someone. True. And you might think, oh, they need me. That's a good thing. No, that's not a good thing. No. That's a dependency thing. Wanting someone, that's their own volition. That's them choosing, oh, I want to be with you. That's so much better. So Morgan should be able to differentiate the two in her head and go, I can still be an independent woman, yeah. but I want to be, I don't need, I want to be with my yeah. husband and she's just not doing it. I, I agree. I agree. Well, so DP is like, you know what? We can still fix this. Let's <laughs> do the task. Let's write a letter to your childhood self and read it to each other. Oh boy. One of my favorite exercises, one of Teresa's least favorite exercises. All right. So, so they get a few days. Who knows how long? Who knows? They're back at the apartment. They did the writing exercise. And Ben, before Morgan walks in, he's like, I'm hoping to read my letter and I'm hoping to win her back. And I think <sighs> this is where he, oh, I don't think his letter was very authentic because he starts reading. And I know this you, took notes. you yeah. took notes on all of it. I took notes on this one. He started reading saying, you're loved even when you, when you question it. And he like looks at her. Boom. I'm glad you picked up on that. That glance to Morgan yeah. was like, I'm going to write what, A, I hope you want to hear, but B, what I think could get me out of this sticky situation. Yeah. Okay. 
I don't question his childhood. Like he talked about his child way before this whole thing happened. So I know he didn't have an easy childhood, right? Mm -hmm. But he did bring this out. And if he didn't look at her, but like he looked at her for validation. Like look, you yep. see, yep. you see, and she's so not impressed. And so not impressed. Yeah, I won't even read what he wrote no. because I don't think it was that substantive. But at the end, he finishes. He's like, love every moment you're alive. And then he looks at Morgan and he gives that head nod to her. He gave the head nod like when you see oh, yeah. when you see your coworker in the hallway and you've already said hey to them that morning. So you're just like, yep. I always say hello. He gave the head <laughs> nod to Morgan. It was terrible. But at least he read his letter. True. Because Morgan looks at him. She's like. And I'm not I'm not comfortable reading my letter because you're probably going to go and share it with Justin. You're probably going to record me secretly uh, and then play it for everyone. I'm over this. And she just storms off. And correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't take a note on this, but if memory serves me correctly, didn't she make him go first or ask him to go first? I think she was like, Ben, why don't you go first? I don't know. If she did, what a hoe. If she was like, why don't you read your letter first? And then he does, and then she's like, "Yeah, I'm not yeah, gonna read mine." Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure about that. But whatever it is, I feel like she at this point she's checked out, and I think at this point Ben's also <sighs> kind of knows that this is not gonna. They're not gonna fix it. Like there is so many broken things in this relationship. Yep. That. That's it. That's she tough. storms off. Ben sitting there with his letter. <laughs> it's all or nothing. Yeah. It's nothing all right now. Right. Let's move to our next couple, Nate and Stasha. So DP is there, right? Classic DP. Talking about their feelings, talking about what they want to get out of this marriage. Yes. And then Stasha opens up and basically summarizes herself in one sentence saying, I want everything now and I want it perfect. I don't want to wait for anything. I know who I am. I know exactly what I want. Nate needs some time. Yeah. She calls out that yeah. Nate and it, is a and little bit good. slower. And that's what I said I, when I was talking to some of you guys, our friends. I said it. I was like, it's perfectly fine. And let's not shit on Nate because the fact that he takes a little longer, it's okay. Yeah. And one of our friends, I peeked at the messages. One of our friends, I won't call them out by name. But said, I don't get it. Why does John hate Nate? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you, if you replied or what you said. I did, yeah. I don't hate Nate. Let me be very clear. I don't hate Nate. What gets on my nerves is how much he thinks he does when in reality, I don't think he's done anything. He talks about how far he's gone out of his way to be there for Stasha and to take these steps. I don't think he's done anything. He's done a lot of talking. I'm going to sign up for therapy. I'm going to move in with you. But he's yet to do any of those things. Well, so that's what bothers me. I don't like people who are all talk. I like people who are all action. True. But he does show up every day and he does all of this with her. That's the bare minimum. That's literally what you signed up for when you signed up for this show. So what do you it's want just, him to do? Just sign up for therapy and you would be happy with him? Yeah, take some that's actions. It? That's it? I forget what else he said he was going to do. But he hadn't done yet. He signed the post up, please. He's that doing was, that was the first thing. He's, he's doing something. No, I don't hate him. I don't I have I don't no, I don't hate him at all. I just wish he would do more and talk less. I think it's okay. He's he's learning to open up. He's okay. getting more vulnerable. Thank you. More vulnerable with her. And like slowly he is getting there. And I honestly thought that he's going to suck. I thought he's there to promote himself on social media. Yeah. That's literally what I thought that Nate's going to be. I was like, oh, pfft, this is going to suck. <laughs> but he's none of it. And okay, yes, he keeps saying I'll sign up for therapy. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But that's fine. I think he's doing great. And I think Stasha needs to understand that not everyone is the same way she is and the fact that he takes time and the fact she acknowledges it is great and then dp says just remember you did not marry yourself yeah that was the first moment in the episode where ka-ching cash that check she's finally 
sharing some words of wisdom. I'm like, this is good. This is very basic. Yeah, they could have called me. I would have said that. This is very basic, but what you got to hear from a professional. True. We just play one on this podcast. DP is some (laughs) sort of professional. Yes. And to hear that is important because a lot of people think, I got to find someone who's just like, I got to find my soulmate. They're just like me. No. It's good to- Have something in common. It's good to have a lot in common. Yes. But it's probably more important to have certain things not in common. True. Like, I lose my temper easier than you do. You can maintain calm, and I think that's important. I'm super picky. You're more go with the flow. True. So that's super important. <laughs> but there's other things that we need to have in common. We both like to move cities. We're both nomads. We both like to travel. So yes. we both like to go to live music and drink and party that's important yes but i was gonna say since you mentioned it yes i before i met you i loved live music but i had no one to go with so i barely Mm. ever did that right Mm -hmm. but i did love traveling i did love hiking and i did it on my own you on the other hand you love music and you had people to go with. you played in a band like you lived it and i think you do or you did like nature before but that wasn't something you did right but when we started dating and all that, like you introduced me, you started bringing me out to sure. live concerts and it's something I loved always, but I just never had the chance or anyone to go with. And the same thing with you and the nature. I was like, let's go on a hike. And then you fell in love with this right. thing and now we do it together. No, it's, a, it's, it's great to be able to introduce yes. things to people. My point is you can't be the same exact person. Yes, It's no, great totally. to have a lot in common. Yeah. But again, in those instances, if someone's really picky, well, then your partner, I hope they're not really picky because you guys are going to butt heads all the time and be in arguments all the time. You need one person to be laid back, one person to be picky, yeah. one person to get upset quickly and one person just be True. cool. Like, So you need those opposites, but then yes, you need to find your match in other things. And so, yeah. DP makes a great point. You didn't marry you. Yeah. You can't expect someone else to be just like you. Give them time. And then she she starts gender stereotyping really hard. <laughs> when she's like, you know, cut Nate some slack. He hasn't been in a household where there was women overanalyzing things all the time like we women do. And I'm like, well, this is a little this is a little gender specific stereotyping. I, mean, I think if you are raised by a single parent and again I, I wasn't but I think that affects you but whether oh, yeah. you're being raised by your dad or just by your mom it does affect you completely it must affect completely you. but yeah. I, I don't know that it has to do with gender everyone is different true very true but I think to a certain level it does I think if you're raised by a single dad it's something different than if you're raised by a single mom. Yeah, I think we could generalize and say yeah. that for sure. I was just surprised to hear a therapist say like, oh, yeah. he didn't have an overanalyzing woman in his life. I mean, please, DP doesn't even live with her husband. Very she's true. A, she's a very different therapist. Very, very <laughs> true. Yeah. Um, yeah, I yeah. you going to say something. And then she's like, one more thing. When you are arguing, be honest. Love this too. This is, I'm taking all my money, DP, because you're coming in, you're earning it. I thought this was a really valuable mm-hmm. piece of advice. When I say be honest, guys, I mean hold hands. <laughs> yeah. It's never something we've done, but I could imagine that just diffusing the situation. You feel that other person, you go, yeah, this is a real person I'm having a disagreement with. You know what? I don't think I could because then you get so close to each other and I like to express myself with hands. Yeah. I don't think I could talk to you and hold uh, hands. Like, it's just, that's it's just, good. That's good because I think in a way you're saying you express yourself with hands. You're yeah, worked Yeah, you know I do that. But then so imagine you, you're having to keep your hands still. It probably settles you down a little <laughs> I bit. I think I would just probably be like, oh, why are we even arguing? You're Maybe just, we, should, we should try. You're just saying because your hands will be so sweaty. You don't want me to Your hands you? would be so they, sweaty. I'm sweating right now. <laughs> but I think it, another great piece of advice, and normally I'm not, in, I'm not into that corny Point out your emotion on the color wheel. But <laughs> this I like. I, th- I see actual practical value yeah. in this. And so nine points for DP so True. far. Yeah. No, good ideas, DP. Good ideas. And then one last thing. She she turned into PC a little bit. She turned to Pastor Cal and she's like, you guys fucking yet? 
Tell me if you guys are. <laughs> you guys making love? And Nate confirms we did consummate the marriage. Yes. And it made Stasha feel more secure. All right. Yeah. Again, All not right. a, not a mean, therapist, it's... but don't put your value and security in sex. Guys are horn dogs. I'm going to gender stereotype right there. Guys, guys are I horned mean, up. Are too, so. We're all horned up. And so we're just looking at bang. But it is important. Imagine you marry someone and then the banging is bad. Yeah. Again, there's more to life than banging. We know a couple. We attended their wedding quite recently. I'm not going to share. They might listen to the podcast, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Well, you have to share with me. You know what I was going to say. Oh, it's the, I do. It's yeah, the yeah, couple yeah. who counts how many sexual yeah. partners they've uh, had. And, yeah. And long story short, it's like it's this, the sex isn't the most important thing in the relationship. There's other sure. more important things. Oh, here. no, I'm not saying it is, but I'm saying it is still important. Yes. Because you want you need to want to be that close to someone. Yes. Yes. So. Okay. New day. It is time to read some letters. And Stasha wrote one to herself that starts to Stasha or Sweet Pea. That was my nickname. We know Stasha. <laughs> we know. If I could give some advice, changing schools will be tough. Meeting people will be difficult. But you'll make friends that last a lifetime. So don't worry about fitting in because you're going to stand out. As a high schooler, you'll grow into a woman and challenge authority in a way that allows you to live your truth. All right, Stasha. All right. That was good. Okay, pretty good. Nathan, this is you <laughs> writing yourself from the future. <laughs> your first year back in the States will give you a feeling of difference. Choose your hobbies. Don't let your dad choose them. Control your temper. At age 14, dad will divorce Maria and you'll be quiet. Snap out of your introverted self and do some extracurriculars. Do your homework. You're smarter than all the kids in all the other grades. <laughs> okay, Lindsay. <laughs> Talk to you later. <laughs> Nathan out. <laughs> Pretty good. They they bond over being shy yeah. as kids. And I don't know. I Now I'm being overcritical of myself because I don't want to get any more hate letters. But Stash is impressed with how deep Nate went. Did he go that deep? I think he went deeper than expected. Did he go that deep? He did. All right. I think he, I think he opens up. I think he's the type of person. He went deeper than Morgan. I'll say that. Sure. I mean, everyone did, but he's slowly opening it, opening it up. And again, we're not there with them 24 seven. So Stasha is the only one who can really judge how much he's opening up. And if he's opening up more than he has a couple of weeks ago, that's big. Let me say this so you guys can all stop typing. <laughs> he's definitely making progress. Yes. And again, like he's there for her. He's not running around with his friends. Yeah. He's not taking selfies, yeah. nonstop and videos. He is there for her and they hang out. He's like, making I progress. think that's, that's important. Yeah. So then we visit Nate's old neighborhood. Nate loves talking about Maria. Yeah, it was Maria. I feel like Maria was hot. Sounds hot. It's a hot name. He's, Is it? Why don't you just say my dad's ex-wife or my stepmom? Or Maybe they have a relationship. Maria. He's always like, oh, yeah. Maria used to used to take me around this neighborhood. <laughs> We'd have a good time. And he's like, um, so when I used to be in this neighborhood, it was fun because my dad would let me just hang out with other kids. Um, he was off banging Maria, probably. <laughs> and so I would just hang out here all day. Well, he moved around a lot because of his dad's job. So yeah, yeah. I think it's different for him to talk about his childhood being looking at one place. I can see that. And then speaking of dad, out of nowhere, Father Joe rolls in. Hello, Joseph. Hello, Joe. And this gets emotional because Stasha asks... Joe, how he was able to be such a good father once Maria left him. As a single dad, how were you able to raise Nate and be such a good dad all on your own? And Joe gets emotional. And it made me emotional because he's like, those are my kids. Like, th there's no other option. I wouldn't want yeah. it any other way. I have no other choice. Maria stopped banging me. I had no one else <laughs> in my life. I looked after these damn kids. Joe says he normally wouldn't cry, but he's crying now. 
And you raised Nate not to be a crier. You raised Nate to be a little bit tougher. And so now Stasha sees, okay, maybe this is why Nate has that tougher exterior. This is why he doesn't let his emotions show. All right. Let's look at Stasha's childhood house. All right. So BC, she showed us the apartment she grew up around, right? Humble beginnings. Humble beginnings. she, She walked to school uphill both ways. You walked to school? I did too. Uh, I never did. I lived too far. I tried to ride my bike once, got too sweaty. Never did that again. (laughs) I took a bus. You guys are sixth grader, just dripping. (laughs) I was taking a bus. Well, I walked to school. It wasn't too far. Oh, I take that back. Sorry. Since since my first grade, I walked to school by myself. I take that back. Remember, you might not remember. Remember that carnival that was in? Oh, yeah. And remember we walked to it through the woods? Yeah. So once I got to high school, I could walk to my high school. We went through the woods, past that carnival, oh. across the street to the high school. So nice. I did walk to school once I got to high school. When is, is it around Thanksgiving? That carnival? Yeah. yeah it's like a fall festival. Yeah, I would love to go again. It was a hot dog eating contest. That's why I would love Teresa to go. Teresa was like, I forget. That yeah, was more recent than not. It was probably th- four, three, four no, years. Oh, yeah. It was definitely when we lived in Florida already. My niece had just been born. Yeah. And you were like, this is so American. (laughs) (laughs) Just guys shoving hot dogs into their mouth. I would love to see it again. Everyone like, eat it, eat it. (laughs) It was beautiful. (laughs) All right. So, yes, she she walked to school. She tells the story about how she made jean purses in high school. This was kind of cool. She'd sew her own purses, but then... That's not good enough. You got to put a little flair on it. You got to stand out. And so she would go to the mall and get whoever she was selling it to. She'd get their name embroidered on it and then sell it to them. Nice. I mean, I was also a little entrepreneur oh, when I was. Uh, you had a shell. You had a shell company. Yeah, I was selling. Um, I was selling uh, like those little snails that <laughs> lived uh, in my aquarium. Everyone that knows. We got accidentally when I bought a couple of fish. They got scooped in and we thought it was a rock, but it was this hermaphrodite. This is that <laughs> hermaphrodite means it has both, right? Uh-huh. And he can reproduce himself and the all words, of a sudden. The words you know, Teresa, sometimes <laughs> just leave me speech because you don't know certain words. <laughs> what are you and then you're about? like hermaphrodite, obviously. <laughs> and so he reproduced or she reproduced themselves and I made money. Well, then we're we're like Stasha and Nate because we're a couple hustlers because I don't know if I told you this. Fake IDs? Well, I sold fake IDs. I've told people <laughs> about that before. But in my younger days, when I back when I would ride my bike to school that once, I used to sell friendship bracelets at the beach. I would I would braid <laughs> string bracelets I used to do, and I would sell them. I used to do that, but I made little crocodiles out of uh, beads. I never put beads on mine. I thought, you know, everyone puts the beads. I just did the string. I did the little crocodiles. I did a little angels, like the little spiders. I think I knew, knew how to do a turtle. Teresa, <laughs> are we a power couple? Of course we are. What are are we a about? power couple, Teresa? We are, but we just don't say it because okay. that's lame. Yeah. You don't have to say it. You yeah. just have to be it. You have to feel it. You have to feel you have the to power. Be it, you have to yes. let others feel the power. Exactly. All right. Let's go to the Miento's house where Stasha spent her last year of high school. Yes. With her friend Deanna because they played volleyball together. Yeah. We meet Deanna Miento, Mama Miento, and Mr. Miento. Yes. And Robin, the mom, offered Stasha to stay with them. This happens a lot. At least it it does here in the States. I don't know if they do that. Well, because in Czech, you don't play sports in high school. No. Guys, I didn't trust my wife. I'm ashamed to admit it. I just, there's probably a podcast of us arguing about it. I'm like, you guys didn't play sports in high school? You did, but after school, it was an after school activity. You just joined a club. There are no sports within the high so, school. This is so crazy to me. We don't have sports in colleges. I know, but you guys are so colleges. good at like hockey. You're so good at yeah, certain but you sports. join clubs. I know, just it's another activity that you do outside of your school. I mean, it makes sense. Like school should be for academics. Yeah, that's how we treated Teams, it. Sports can be for sports. Yeah, I mean, it makes you a more well-rounded person. You go to school. You had gym class, right? Yeah, freaking hated it. Hated we had to like it. run around and yeah, sometimes we hit the the actual gym. We're like sitting on equipments. <laughs> 
and they're trying picture, to do a workout. I just picture a bunch of checks like smoking cigarettes, doing bicep curls, <laughs> listening to like. <laughs> well, <laughs> like me and Teresa, when my childhood bestie's name was Teresa, or is it Teresa? When we had to run around the school, like the middle school, it was a huge freaking school. Sometimes they made us like run around, and half of the half of the lab was covered by the school, right? Mm -hmm. And our teachers were standing uh, inside, not the school, but inside the backyard with the running track and all that. So they could only see us the other half of the circle. Uh -huh. So me and Teresa always put cigarettes behind <laughs> our shorts. And then the first half of the circle, we walked it, we smoked the cigarette. And then we slowly ran the rest. Because and the teachers couldn't see you behind the building? No, they couldn't. The building was like blocking. So uh, there was a huge school. It was one of the biggest schools. So when we ran around the building side, other teachers could see us, but who cares, right? Uh -huh. And then when the teachers actually could see us, and it was like a mile to run around that whole complex. So they just saw smoke signals. They were like, who's sending these smoke signals from the other side of the building? Yeah. And then we ran the rest and then we came back and we we're trying to like stand away from the teacher so she didn't smell it. This European moment brought to you by <laughs> Theresa. It wasn't just me and her. It was a bunch of other kids. So All right. That's basically it for Stasha yes. and Nate, right? I think this is a good time to take a break. If you Let's agree. do it. You agree? All right. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back in a second. And we're back. Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Teresa. How, How are you? How is it going? Good. I refreshed my tea. Yeah, same here. I refreshed my moo mug. Your moo mug gets very hot. Very hot. Oh, we should write a review because I think that you could fix that. Because it's, it's a porcelain. Okay. Oh, yeah. Feel my handle. I know because it's the porcelain and gets hot. Why don't hot. they make the handle out of something different? I don't know, but I love it. That's a that's a little bit of a fail there. Don't no, don't burn yourself. No, it cools it cools down. Okay. All right. Let's talk about our next couple. Kristen and Mitch. All right. Oh yeah. DP is at the apartment, of course. And they talk about the friction that they had early on, right? No one's gonna forget that. Mitch came out, said he wasn't attracted to his wife. Yeah. Never forget. And I said it. I said it. I said it that Kristen, even if they make it work, she will never forget that. She'll never forget it. And here's why I'm happy with Kristen. I'm happy with her for a lot of reasons, but I'm happy with her here for realizing when Mitch said he wasn't feeling it early on, I overcompensated. Mm -hmm. I tried to go so hard to make him so happy that he'd have no reason not to like me. And in that, I lost a little bit of myself. Yeah. And then she asked, she's like, I like Mitch. Like we have fun. It's great. But I'm starting to lose myself a little bit because now I set certain expectation. And I walk on eggshells yes. and she's like, I don't want to do it. And this is what I, I went from like really hating Mitch to like, I actually like Mitch because he all unacknowledges all this. He never fights back. He's mm. never just like, oh, he never gets pissed at her for spilling her guts, for yeah. opening up. He's like, shit, I think it's getting to him. And I think it's actually helping him to realize like what he's doing. Yeah, you're right. He he really painted himself in a bad way. Yeah. The first episode, the second episode. And if you forget those things, you'd go, all right, He's a little over the top, maybe sometimes yeah, with environmental things, but good heart, good guy. It's hard. It's just hard to forget about those early days. But if you do, yeah, you can see he's coming from the right place. He's trying. He owns up to his mistakes. And I'm glad Kristen is done walking on eggshells. But I will say, be careful in your overcorrection because or be careful in your correction, I should say, because you can overcorrect. You could go from, oh, I was trying to make him so happy. I was doing everything to please him so he would love me. Now I'm going to go the opposite. Every little thing that I'm not happy with, I'm going to say. I'm going to tell him when he's getting on my nerves. I'm going to tell him when he's chewing too loudly. I'm going to tell him when mm -hmm. I don't want to do that, right? You got you to gotta not overcorrect. Yeah. I think this exercise that DP is going to give them, writing the letters, I don't think it did a lot for any of them, but 
Christian and Mitch. I think it did it. Yeah. It was everything. Like it changed. It made them understand and they both opened up. And I, I loved it. Like for them, I think the writing the letters was a game changer. Yeah. Because I think, I hate to call someone inauthentic. So I don't want to do that. But I think Mitch was very true to himself and very mm-hmm. authentic in his words. And that's why it's so powerful. Yeah. And so for you, you're like, I don't, I don't think I could do this, this exercise. I don't think I could get in touch with my emotions and, and really put it down on paper. Then don't do it because it's, it's going to be useless. It's going to be pointless. You're not going to get anything out of it. And I think maybe some of these couples fall victim to that. Mitch, I think, dug down deep mm-hmm. and he had his, he was backed into a corner. Kristen kind of put him in his place. So he had to, Yeah, he knew his relationship was in a difficult place. So he knew he had to come through with this. And I think he did. He sure did. And again, he, when she vents and she started venting recently and tells him how she really feels and how he makes her feel. I like that he listens and he acknowledges it because right now she's like, I want to know if he still feels like on the day two of the honeymoon. And like, mm-hmm. I want to know. And I love that she said this. She's like, I want to know if he would be like, there is a chance of him like falling in love. Right. She didn't say, oh, I want I want to know that he loves, you know, right, how some other couples. That's unrealistic. Come on. As yeah. many of these, as they all want to say, oh, yeah. I'm in love. I'm falling in love. Come on. Yes. But she... And be just like, yeah, like, uh, I, I, I understand what you're saying. And Kristen just wants the affection. She wants to feel and hear the affection from Mitch. And he's like, yes, I'm definitely, you know, I admire you, I admire your bravery. Yeah. And I'm thankful for you. And you can tell that he really means it. And her kind of like pushing him into a corner when she says like, you do this and this and that, I feel like I'm walking on eggshells. I think it really, really helps him to be like, okay, shit, um, if I want to make this work, like I don't want to have this fake person next to me who's trying to be someone that she's not. Like you don't want that. Right, right. No, and I'm not always all about needing validation. I don't love when people need validation. In this circumstance, she needs it yeah. because she's coming from a place where she was literally told, yeah. I'm not attracted to yeah. you. So she needs that validation. I'm, I'm glad Mitch is coming around and giving it. We go back to the childhood days. Yes. So first we're going to visit a softball field. <laughs> softball diamond. Yeah. Um, this is a place where Kristen feels at home. I don't know why, because I'm sorry, but Kristen, you have a terrible arm. For someone who apparently <laughs> grew up playing softball, you, you can hardly throw the ball. You throw it much better than Mitch, but you can. it's tough to watch. I can tell. Oh, my gosh. They sometimes made us play baseball in school, in high school. Yeah. None of us were like, really knew what to do. Well, so it's, we America, just, it's America's pastime. Yeah. It's not Czech. It's we're not just the Czech like Republic's trying pastime. We were just trying to hit the ball and like trying to run around, but St- yeah. Stick, was, to, stick was, to hockey, I would say, you Czechs. That was a struggle for us. I was like, uh, what, what were we doing? <laughs> yeah. But they, they finish up with the softball. They sit down to talk. And Kristen brings up how things were really put on her as a child. A lot of pressure. She was really stressed out as a kid. I think unnecessarily. Everything was very serious. Even things like sports. If she struck out. Should get a talking to. Yes. And this is something I can relate to. Not to hmm. open up about myself. But Let's do it. Let's do it. No, I don't know if I want to. But long story short, my parents, especially my mom, always wanted me to be, to be perfect. I always, she picked activities for me. Like, yes, I always loved art. That was something I wanted to do. But I did everything. I played tennis. I joined synchronized swimming, regular swimming. I played badminton. I did ceramics. Because I did art classes. Because of your mom? I played piano. I played the flute. You showed dogs. I showed dogs. Well, I wanted to show dogs. <laughs> but my mom grew up in a very strict environment because my grandma, ah. not that my grandma was that strict. My grandma was obsessed with my mom. 
because my mom had a sister who passed away mm-hmm. as a child, right? So my my grandma got so and still is so attached to my mom and so overprotective that my mom couldn't do anything. She played piano, but nothing dangerous. My mom couldn't yeah. really go out. She couldn't date. She couldn't do this. And then my mom went for college and got a little wild, met my dad, Hello. never told my, da- my my grandma that she moved in with my dad before they got married. My mom, my grandma allowed her to take a driving li- driver's license test, mm-hmm. but didn't allow her to drive. So my mom passed her test at 18, but didn't drive until she was 26, which was the time my dad bought a car. Yeah. That's why she is not the best driver because she's, she's never been properly trained. Yeah, neither is your dad though. What's his excuse? Well, he's out of control. <laughs> my dad is out of control. Yeah. But, and so I feel like in a way she tried to, Make my childhood what her wasn't. Yeah, that makes sense. But doesn't mean that I wanted to do all that. And the older I got, the more I was like resenting all that. I'm almost like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. And I, I just ended up going a little while, just finding a different group of friends, smoking cigarettes after schools. And, and during school. <laughs> and during school and like dropping all these activities because I just was like, I don't want to, I don't want to do this. And yeah. Did- so... Yeah, so there was this, pre- and on top of that, there was the pressure of like me, I had to have the best grades, I wasn't the best at math and chemistry, and there was a struggle for me, and I was being grounded when I didn't bring good mm. grades. Like, I, my dad literally grounded me for two or three months. I also had to work, like, I had to find a job, so... I can relate, but I didn't see this, like, it was cutting my childhood. I almost feel like the... The amount of pressure or like but the way my mom pushed me to do certain things that not didn't kill my childhood, but they kind of like shaped me or pushed me a certain way that I was like, I was like resenting her for like all that. And then she was mad at me for not, you know, continuing to do certain things. And I just ended up hating it. And yeah. Did you ever get to raise your hand and say, oh, I want to play soccer let me play soccer instead of badminton did you get to do things you wanted to do or is only things your mom wanted you to do that's the thing i got so tired of doing things Mm. that i didn't want to do anything but in the beginning was she like all right pick an activity or did she say you're doing this activity you're doing that activity i don't remember i guess like some i must have picked but i'm I'm sure that was something i wanted to do right yeah but yeah, it was. I got to the point that I'm like, I don't want to do anything. It's important to note you're also an only child, so I feel like all that energy in neuroses, your mom could only put it on you. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like me, shout out to Rachel, who's listening. Thank you, Rachel. Um, she's she's the older child, so I think my by the time I came around, my parents were like I'm exhausted. I've already <laughs> raised one kid. I'm not gonna force. John to do anything he doesn't want to do. We've already disciplined Rachel. So I got to learn from that. But also again, like we did this once, just do, <laughs> just, just yeah. do what you need to do. So I think I probably had it a little easier being a second child. You being an only child just got it all. I just went crazy. Not, not crazy. I went wild. I literally started smoking cigarettes, started going out, drinking. And she was allowing me to do that in a way. She knew but it's always, she was upset. She was upset with the people I was hanging out with. She didn't really know what was going on in my life. And she was always like wanting to know, but I didn't want to share. And, and your dad was just not really caring about what was happening there. Oh, he, he was. I know he, he cared about you the- and he, I know he cared about you or cares about you and loves you deeply, but was just like, do whatever, do whatever you want. Well, honey. my dad was like, if you have good grades, you do you. Yeah. But he was the one always grounding me for yeah. every single... That my dad is... He grounded me for the stupidest shit. But when it was something bigger, like when, okay, I'm 15, I'm smoking. Or I'm 15, I basically climbed up the stairs to an apartment because I was so wasted. He was like, meh, you live, you learn. Yeah. So he... It was almost like priorities, that. <laughs> but then I got grounded when he asked me to take the garbage out and the bag broke. Yeah. And I, it was basically all over the kitchen because he saw me like trying to get it out. Right. And for that, I was grounded for two weeks. Interesting. So it was, that was, was interesting. Interesting. All right. 
Let's... I think I just wrote my letter. <laughs> I think you did. <laughs> Let's talk about Mitch. I mean, this is sad, this, this segment, because can, can we see a happy photo? Can we see uh, a birthday party, uh, Halloween, maybe you learning how to ride the bike, Mitch? Like, here's the photo right after my parents got divorced. Um, <laughs> this is me after an uh, earthquake came through our <laughs> living room. It's like, where? And no happy moments, nothing. Well, it, it's good to show the, the sad moments, too. I think if that was something major you remember from your childhood... Then you show it because you don't want to put up this, oh, my childhood was so happy. Yeah. If it wasn't. And again, guys, I don't want to make the impression that my childhood wasn't. My childhood was very happy. It started becoming a little complicated when I was like, <laughs> when I turned 14, 15. Like before As that, it does I for loved most, it. For most pubescent yeah. teens. But what I'm saying is like, it's, I don't want to say, oh, I had a bad childhood. I didn't. I had a great childhood. My parents literally, especially my mom, they were taking me to places when I decided I want to see elephants. We drove across the Czech Republic to yeah. the only zoo that had elephants. We spent the whole day looking at elephants. Like They did a lot of things for me. So my childhood was amazing. I just feel like when I got older, I just got annoyed. Mm. All right. So... We do learn Mitch was a troublemaker. Who would have thought he almost got held back a grade? I would have not guessed that. He seems like a goody two shoes mm-hmm. type, but apparently he he was a little bit of a rebel mm-hmm. in his in his younger days. And so Kristen's eyes are opened. She's learning a lot about Mitch and feels like if I had only known this sooner, because it's softening her up. And this is just the start of the softening. Yeah. She's about to get even softer. Yeah. And she developed a soft spot for Mitch. Yeah. You throw a lot of soft spots, like how babies have soft spots. That's why I touch babies. Yeah. She they loves the soft spot. <laughs> and they smell good. Their heads smell good. Babies smell amazing. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the soft it's spot. Just the freshness. But fresh, just the these, fresh baby has been spoiled by the world. Babies smell so good. Yeah, they do. So comforting. So comforting. They don't make that scent to hang from your rearview mirror. <laughs> newborn baby. Oh, what's, what smells this? This is delightful. Oh, this is a newborn baby. <laughs> Shark Tank prob- idea. I would probably buy it. <laughs> Shark Tank idea. Um, or just like um, fabric softener. What do you throw in the dryer? Fabric sheet? Well, you have these fabric softeners for babies. I know what I'm saying. You have linen, right? Where? Yeah. You have fresh linen. You have cotton. There's newborn baby. Throw that one in there. <laughs> Don't throw a newborn baby in a dryer, but newborn baby scent. Bada bing, bada bing. I would now also buy that. Now your towels smell like newborn baby. <laughs> I would love that. Great idea. Um, on a sadder, more emotional note, not even sad, it was beautiful. They go to the cemetery to to visit Stanley Silverstein, which is a name that just rolls off the tongue, Mitch's dad. And it was emotional because he's like, I wish I told my dad how proud of him I was. And then what got me was he's doing the selfie video. He's there with Kristen. And he's like, Dad, this is my wife, Kristen. I, th- I think you'd like her. I was like, that really that yeah. got to me. It made me emotional. Yeah, and Kristen's emotional. It was a beautiful moment. <sighs> we saw a photo. Mitch had some lettuce on his head back in the day. So he's got, he had some nice flow. Oh, yeah. I also, okay, this is a side topic, I guess, but... You saw the cemeteries in the Czech Republic, right? Yes. You're not supposed to step on it. You cannot sit on it. You cannot yeah. step on it. In America, you walk over graves. It's his, I find it, it so disrespectful. It's his dad. He can do what he wants. No, you don't. You're not. You shouldn't walk on someone but else's it's grave. Many times, it's, it's not marked where the coffin is. Really. No, you'd have to do some math and figure. Well, six, yeah, but I feel like that's so I disrespectful. It's, it's not just, the best. I, I had a really. When we went to a funeral of of your family member, I I was like, "What is happening? I I don't want to step on anyone, but I, I don't know where else to go." Yeah, they're they're not gonna mind. I don't think they'll wake up. But the thing I find most disrespectful is the grave diggers. I guess that's their name. They're they're always off in the corner. Like yeah, you're having your your ceremony and you're saying goodbye. They're off in the corner, just wearing like torn to pieces hoodies and baggy jeans and it's like you could have dressed for the occasion like we're yeah. all here dressed like why not have a uniform there's no yeah. u- there's no uniform 
Not that like a janitorial jumpsuit would be better, but at least if you were in a uniform, it would look proper. Yeah, at least like you a look, blank jumpsuit. Yeah, you, you look sloppy. And to yeah. me, that w- always was so disrespectful to me. But they're, I don't know. It's I just also don't understand why they're there. I think they should dig the hole, leave, and then come mm, back. Yeah. Nah. But they put the, they, they kind of like lower the coffee. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Anyways. Let's go to the beach. It's time to read some letters. Kristen goes first. I don't know. Nothing Nothing great there. I want to talk about Mitch's though. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Basically just the opening where he's like, dear younger Mitch. What's up, my man? <laughs> <laughs> and you think it starts a little cheesy and like he's not going to take it seriously. But then he he gets emotional. And he gets real and he gets authentic and he says, here's the hard part. You're going to feel like you don't fit in. It can be lonely, but embrace yourself. Embrace who you are. Your strength is that you chart your own path and that's what makes you cool. And you, you stay true to yourself even when it's difficult, even when you're isolated. It's not because you're different. It's because you, you haven't learned how to process your feelings or admit when you're scared or sad. And so if there's one thing I would change, I'd find my path sooner. And ultimately, all the wrong turns and distractions and mistakes is going to lead you back to your truth. Have faith. Take care of yourself. Signed, your older self. Yeah, that was a good one. And Kristen's emotional. Mitch is emotional. And guess what? Anger who this? It's not that anymore because Kristen said yeah. she doesn't hold any more any grudges against Mitch, which she did, and we all knew she did. Yeah. Like if someone tells you I'm not attracted to you and he happened to be your husband, you're not gonna <laughs> forget about it. I don't think so. And I don't think she will forget about it, but at least she can understand him more and she's softened and warm. Yeah. And she's like, I wish I knew this before I was a little harsh. But I feel like her being harsh it's really fair. helped him understand because his comments about the whole her flipping houses that wasn't nice that wasn't supportive right and so i'm glad she she stepped up and opened up and said that dude i just want your support like we can do it the good way she offered to put a sustainability spin on it right Mm -hmm. just roll with it mitch yeah and i think he knows i hope he knows yeah now let's not lie to ourselves i don't think it's gonna be all rainbows and butterflies no it's not moving forward no it's not But but they've reached a good place yes All right, let's talk about this next couple, Alexis and Justin. We see, we saw at the top of the show, they had just left that dinner. Remember, they left dinner in a rage and Justin was on the street. Alexis approached. Mm -hmm. She's a little confused how they got to this point. But Justin just says, well, I felt, I felt like you shut down at the table. What he really needs is he is someone who needs constant validation. And that's the shit I don't support. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't support it for Kristen either, except for the fact that her husband literally told her to her face he's not attracted to her. So you got to kind of dig yourself out of that hole. Validation, it it serves a purpose in this instance. Justin, for some reason, just needs it all the time. And I don't get that. He wasn't getting it at the table. So that's why he got hurt. And Alexis, rightfully so, I think is feeling, you're not even concerned with us. You're concerned with how people see you Mm -hmm. and that's why you need me to be like oh yeah you're the best husband you're the greatest i got the the man of all man yeah it's all about you justin and not about us and so that was the issue but they seem to resolve it and we move on to the next day where dp pays them a visit yes hello dp hello dl what do you mean hello dick level because (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> DP is literally on dick level when she stands next to Justin. But aside from that, there's actually some some sad news that needs to be addressed. It's been an emotional day, Teresa. Yes. And first I was like, ah, he's crying again. Yeah, what are we crying about now? But I get it. Um, we got a call from the trainer <sighs> from that weird facility he dropped the oh, dog off. Oh, boy. But apparently Ma- Maya's trainer said she's not doing being having any progress she's still aggressive and inconsistent and therefore she's gonna stay at the farm okay a lot of thoughts 
Didn't you say when you uh, kill a pet? You say I t- I'm taking them out to the farm. Yeah. yeah. First thought. Second thought. Oh, Maya totally died at that facility. <laughs> Maya didn't make it out of that facility. And that's no. why I was like, Justin, it's just, it's just better if you just leave Maya here. I think Maya is at the farm already. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Not making a lot of progress here. It's going to be years before we make it. Don't even waste your time with Maya. Just forget about yeah. Maya. Forget She's she ever seven. existed. Uh, nah. Is it? Who would uh, say don't pick your dog up? I don't know. I mean, that's you so should- fishy. Yeah, it is. That's so, that's that's so fishy. It yeah. should be yeah, take take your dog because there's a lot of other dogs here and it's not it's not conducive to the I would also try to find a different trainer that has like, give let's, up. Yeah. Let's give, give it up. one more shot with <laughs> someone else. They totally killed Maya. Yeah, and like I would never give up a dog that no. easily. No, I would say okay, n- not a shitty dog, shitty trainer. Let's find a different trainer. Yes. The whole thing is super sketch. Super but, sketch. Yeah, he's crying, being emotional. And in the midst of all this, they basically said, yeah, we had some hard times, hard talks, but we started over. Yes. Blank slate. Yes. Forgive and forget. You got to remind yourself that Alexis, even though she's an alpha, she's still sensitive. That's what Justin had to do. And... Alexis is like, yeah, I am. But to me, sensitivity is vulnerability and I don't want to be vulnerable. That's just the way she was raised, right? She attributes it to to the family dynamic and how she grew up. And she says, when you're vulnerable, you're giving someone else power. And I don't ever want to give someone else yeah. power. But she acknowledges that you need it. For a marriage to work. Yeah. And here we go again. DP cash that check because (laughs) she goes, Dr. Pepper says, there's no way to be in love or in a marriage without being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And I would agree. And I love that. And I would add on to that DP and you can take this for free. (laughs) I would say. You have to be vulnerable. You have to allow that. You have to allow yourself to be vulnerable to see what your partner does with those vulnerabilities. Oh. You have to say, all right, here's my weaknesses. Here's my vulnerabilities. Here's what makes me uncomfortable. Now, what do you do as a partner? Do you help me feel more secure? Do you help me with those? Or do you exploit them? Do you use them to give yourself more power? You, you got to, you know. Subconsciously, we do it. I don't think we're doing it consciously and saying, yeah, let's see what happens. But you open yourself up to your partner and you see, do they support me in my insecurities and make me feel better and help me? Or do they use them against me? So I think it's important. I agree with you, DP. Yeah, DP DP was doing her job. She's coming through. I think it was Nate who said like, oh, I haven't seen you since... Since the time that you told me that I got matched, yeah. which and but she's like, yeah, but we wa- we watch you. Oh yeah, it's like they are not involved really at not. all. They're really not. But I'm telling you, she earned her check this episode more so than definitely um, Doctor Pu or whatever her name was. And yeah, PC just comes in like a horn dog. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. All We're, right, let's look at the Justin's childhood spot. It's a playground. Oh boy. I was like thinking about it. If he's this tall, how do you even enjoy a slide? Oh, you probably sit down. You already touched the ground. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, he wasn't. He wasn't going on slides. He was too busy flying a kite. Yes. I used to like, kind of like it. My parents get gave me a kite every fall, and every fall I ruined it. I never liked it until my parents got me a kite and we went to the beach and I did it. Oh. And there are serious, this is where I used to sell my bracelets to raise uh, at the <laughs> beach, um, serious gusts of winds when yeah. you're at the beach. And so it was like, it was like really, it was something oh. else and it was fun. And it wasn't the kite that Justin was flying. It was like a box kite. I don't know if that's actually how you pronounce it. Yeah, it, I know what you mean. Like filled with air and it was super fun. And so I get, I get this, the, yeah. the the Justin Kite thing. We but. call it the dragon. Oh, okay. Is I it used to get like this plastic dragon kite with like some whatever graphic on it. Yeah. And I hated when I went. It was like this spot between the apartments where we lived in and the forest. It was this field. It was like a cornfield. Yeah. And I was always so mad when I like 
packed everything, packed the freaking kite, walk all, all the way over to the field, and there was no wind. I would be into trick kites. Like there are some kites, I think you have two strings and you can do tricks with them. Like that's pretty cool. Oh. But after five minutes of just a normal kite being flown, it's like, all right, well, what does it do now? Yeah, no, I'm with you. But Justin loves it. Uh, he brings up how his brother raised him and that was tough for him. And the the kind of breaking point here where Alexis starts to get a soft spot for, for Justin is when he says, he used to always just tell me, figure it out. Mm-hmm. Figure, if I needed something, if I needed to learn how to do something, he would just tell me, figure it out. And Alexis is like, all right, well, that's kind of, that makes sense. That's why you are the way you are because you were just always told to figure it out yourself. And he's like, yeah. And so Alexis is like, all right, I get it now. But I feel like if that's the case, that would make you tougher. I know. It's so that wouldn't much. make you like, uh, how, okay, he's a little whiny. So it wouldn't make you whiny <laughs> and it's like be, maybe a people pleaser. I don't know. But I feel like this kind of upbringing would make you like tough. Yeah. My favorite editorial moment of this episode is Alexis telling the camera, I love that my husband is sensitive, but, and then you cut to Justin just <laughs> running with the kite. <laughs> So yeah, so she funny. was like, but flying a kite. <laughs> She's like, I would never think I'm going to fly a kite like this in a doll. So good. So then we cut to <laughs> we cut to Alexis bringing Justin to the basketball court and Justin probably just being like, I should have brought my kite. This is a great place to fly a kite. <laughs> and they shoot around for a little bit and then they sit down to scrapbook or, or Alexis yeah. shows off her scrapbook. And Justin with the, just the deep questions. So how many basketball games do you think you've played? <laughs> uh, I don't know, a few hundred. Yeah. But it taught her about hard work. Mm-hmm. The, the, the game, the team element, it taught her about hard work, busting your ass. And then we get Bag Lady by Alexis Williams. This is her note. I inherited my mother's lips, hips, and inadvertently her hyper-independence. It should have rhymed. You should have completed the rhyme (laughs) scheme, Alexis. One day, as I struggled to get my groceries into my apartment, my roommate was just watching television. Probably maths. I yelled out, (laughs) are you not going to help? And he said, you never asked for help. So I stopped offering. And it was in that moment. I learned I I didn't have to do everything on my own. So I set out to create an environment where people could shamelessly ask for help. You know what's funny? What's funny? You probably know it. I never ask for help. Uh, Just think about time that I (laughs) ask for help. I don't ask for help. Sometimes you ask me. If you're writing an email or something about grammar, you'll ask. Well, that's just me that's trying asking to. For help. That's asking for help, Teresa. You yes. could Google it or you could say. Well, Google, Google says a lot of things. You could say, fuck it, I don't care. You ask me for help, Teresa. True. Okay. Sometimes you ask me to open up a jar of sauce. <laughs> if you, after five minutes of you wrestling with it, sometimes that's you not ask. true. I can open the sauce, but when I'm cooking and my hands are all like okay, dirty. sometimes you ask for help, Teresa. Yeah. A lot of times you don't, but you've softened over the years, and I think you ask for help. Yes. I ask for help all the time. Sometimes you've you've drank too much the night before, and you ask me to get you an ice pack <laughs> for your head. <laughs> because if okay. you're standing in the kitchen, I'm like, can so you get me an back. ice pack? So take it back. All right, all right. I I learned to ask for help, but I yeah. used to. I never. Did ask for help before. Um, okay. You know what I noticed? What? Justin didn't read a letter. He did? No, because San Diego would probably be underwater right now <laughs> if he had to write and read a letter. Yeah, that's right. He did not. No letter. Yeah. Well, there's they seem to be working things out. So uh, We'll see. Until next week. Until next it's week. Up and down and up and down. All right. Just Last but not least. Yes. Lindy and Miguel. So Lindy made Dr. Pepper cookies because of course she did. Santa's here. Oh, hello, Mm. Santa. Um, DP says, I hear the marriage is going well, but I want to be useful. So let's, let's go deeper. Let's try to get a little bit deeper. And Lindsay brings up how she's 
defensive, but she's trying to learn not to be. And she brings up how sometimes I'll be cooking and Miguel will walk by and he'll make a comment and I'll get upset. Yeah, they do communicate well. Like she also, I think her, Kristen and Stasha, they say things. Like they express themselves. Yes. So does Morgan. (laughs) Well, so does Alexis, but Alexis, I think Justin has a hard time following. Yeah. Um, What I find interesting, and again, DP just knocking it out of the park, says you fought very hard for your independence, Lindy. So when you feel controlled at all, it's good. It's it's hitting a deeper nerve. And I'm like, mm-hmm. that's so true. It goes back to her religious days yeah. where she couldn't do anything. She wanted to dance. They said no. Mm-hmm. She wanted a piece of ham. They said no. And so now she's cooking. And Miguel says, add a little more pepper. And she says no. Mm-hmm. She wants that independence. It's, it's a great insight, DP. Great insight. Yeah, DP is doing a good job. Good job, DP. And then she's going to poke the dragon. Oh, boy. Uh, have you guys said the L word yet? Not, Not yet. Yeah, Just wait, DP. Just wait. But Miguel is like, it's special for me. I don't overuse it, which I'm with him. So it has to, I have to mean it to say it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So then, because we cannot really go to the places that they grew up in, because Miguel is from Puerto Rico, and Lindy grew up in a cult. Yeah, she so let's go, go somewhere that they couldn't go. Well, at least Lindy. And it's a dance studio because dance represents freedom for Lindy. Also, <laughs> there's always one couple on every season that goes dancing. Never forget Vinny. Well, Never he forget hated it. <laughs> with the bachata. He said, that's okay with the, I can do a salsa, but bachata, I'm not too comfortable with the bachata. Uh, they are still together. I think they were okay. Never forget poor But yeah, ben. he was so frustrated <laughs> with himself. So they danced. It was fine. Then there was a table with candles and wine set up in the da- in the sweaty yeah. dance studio. So romantic. Like, <laughs> put, it on the, put it in the parking lot. It's got to be better than that sweaty <laughs> dance studio. But yeah, she explains how I couldn't dance with people growing up. In, in the religion. And the first time I, I danced with a man, I think, was our first dance at her wedding. And she's like, I don't get it. It, it was such a, it was such a child. I don't, I'm trying to think of the right word. It's not immature. It's not a child. It's such an innocent. Mm-hmm. It was such an innocent response when she goes, I don't get it because there's dancing in the Bible. Like yeah. She really couldn't get it. And that's when Miguel goes, <laughs> There's parting in the Bible. <laughs> Hell <laughs> yeah, my brother. my favorite line of this episode. <laughs> Hell yeah. And Lindy's like, I've never seen my parents dance. I've never seen them drink, eat shellfish. And this makes Miguel sad and makes him proud at the same time, I think, that she fought to take some control of her life. Yeah. And then Lindy reads her letter. Yeah. Yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And then we go to the house of Puerto Rico. Yes. To... Look at Miguel's childhood. Yes. He tells Lindy about, this is where I grew up. This is my favorite beach. There was good times. There was bad times. One day I'll bring you. If we were on a different season of maths, we would have honeymooned there, but we didn't. So one day we'll have to go to go on our own. And he tells a story about growing up, how he never fit in, right? In New York, he'd get picked on for being Puerto Rican, but in Puerto Rico, he'd get picked on for being American, for yeah. not for not speaking Spanish. So he was always the outsider. Yes. And then he, he reads, shares his letter. He reads his letter. And yeah. he ends it with like, and you will meet a total babe. A to- total babe that you, fo- you fell madly in love with. And what with? I love you, Lindy. What? And she loves him back. I don't think she expected it. I guess it was shock because she surprisingly kept it together. Mm-hmm. For Lindy, I thought she would have freaked out. Oh, yeah. Ran around in circles, <laughs> right? Like started rolling on the ground, stop, <laughs> drop, and roll. But she was just like, I love you too. Yeah. You know, it was just so calm and cool for Lindy. Very it surprising. Was, yeah. But that was the episode. That's where it ends. Good episode. Teresa yeah. hates it, but I loved it. I, honestly, <laughs> I didn't love watching it, but I loved talking about it. It's it always better. I feel like because we have a little more loves fun a, with it. Love's a strong word, Teresa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you shared a lot. You wrote your letter. It was oh beautiful. Oh, my gosh. I almost think we should probably take it out. That no, was beautiful. I loved it. All, All right, right, guys. 
All right. Thank you, guys. We hope you enjoyed the episode, enjoyed the podcast. Thank you so much for listening. As always, we love you guys with a capital L, O V E. Follow us on Instagram at Married to Reality Pod. Check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash Married to Reality. So much good stuff happening over there. Thank you for the reviews. And last but certainly not least, make sure you follow the podcast. So easy to do. You look down, you smash that follow button. Guys, smash it like it's as hot as hopefully the next all right. episode. All right, there you go, a little optimism. <laughs> Thank you guys again for listening. I think I've said it all of you. So. I've said it all. All right, we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.